The Decapolis is mentioned several times in the Gospels. It was a region rather than a place. Ten cities formed the Greco-Roman Federation or League of the Region. The ten cities of the Decapolis were Philadelphia, known today as Amman, Pella, this was where the Christians fled before the destruction of Jerusalem, Bethshean, on the western side of the Jordan River, Dion, Raphana, Damascus, Canatha, Hippos, which had a harbour on Lake Galilee, Gadara, it's also known as Um Caius, and Jerash. Nine of the ten cities occupied the eastern side of the Jordan River. Bethshean means quiet place, and it's the only city on the western side of the Jordan River. Pompey the Great and the Romans rebuilt the city on top of the foundations of many other ancient civilizations in 63 BC. The city itself was constructed in Greco-Roman style with bathhouses, toilets, a theatre and a marketplace. It sat at a strategically important place for the Romans at the junction of the Jezreel and Jordan valleys, overlooking the trade routes that travelled north-south and east-west. Some scholars have suggested that Betchian was the capital of the Decapolis. Pompey the Great created the Federation during 64 BC to encourage trade and more particularly as a defence against the threat of the Nabataeans in the southeast. For many years the Nabataeans had remained a thorn in the southeastern section of the Roman Empire. The Romans were unable to conquer them because the Nabataean capital was Petra and Petra lay behind a huge mountainous range. The only way into the city appeared to be through one deep ravine. And therefore, no serious assault could ever be considered. This meant that the Nabataeans could remain a serious threat against the Romans, or more particularly, their trade routes, but they themselves were safe from counter-attack. As a result, the Nabataeans were able to control or at least raid the merchants travelling along the King's Highway, the major trade route south of Damascus. This infuriated Mark Antony, one of the three Roman rulers. So in 31 BC, he dispatched Herod the Great to weaken the Nabataean stranglehold on the trade route. Herod attacked the marauders, won several victories and freed up the highway. So Mark Antony rewarded him with one of the cities in the Decapolis, Gadara, to thank him and encourage him to keep a watchful eye over the highway. The Decapolis is mentioned only a few times in the New Testament. The Gospel writer Matthew tells us that a large group of people travelled from the Decapolis to hear Jesus speak the Sermon on the Mount. In Mark's Gospel, he records a story where Jesus and his disciples sailed over to the eastern side of the lake to the region of the Decapolis. A demon-possessed man from Gerasa charged at him. Jesus stood his ground, rebuked the evil spirits, and cast them into a large herd of pigs. The pigs then rushed down the hill and drowned in the lake. The man then sat calmly before Jesus. He wanted to join Jesus and his disciples, but Jesus said no and encouraged him to go and tell his family how much God had done for him. Mark then tells us that the man subsequently traveled throughout the Decapolis, telling people how much Jesus had done for him.
Later, in Mark's Gospel, Jesus himself would travel through the Decapolis. At one time, people brought to him a deaf mute who Jesus healed. As a result, Jesus' reputation grew among the Gentiles in the Decapolis. In the Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, we read about Jesus feeding the 4,000 Gentiles and certainly many of these Gentiles would have been from the Decapolis. Although Jesus came to fulfill Jewish prophecies and ministered to the people of Israel, we begin to see in Jesus' ministry a foreshadowing of the gospel going out into the Gentile world through Jesus' interaction with people of the Decapolis. Jesus came to seek and save the lost, irrespective of what tribe, people group or nationality. <laughs>